Here's a little background info on digital audio delay effects and how we can get a demo up and running with Teensy 3.6. Looking at the description for an audio delay effect, and looking at this little block diagram, we can have some sort of an audio signal coming into a storage medium. So let's say this is a microphone or something else, and this delay line is our Teensy with some RAM storing the audio that it receives. And with Teensy 3.6 onboard memory, we can get maybe over two seconds worth of storage. So we send in some audio and we hear it immediately in real time. So anywhere up to two seconds or so, we can choose to start playing back what's been recorded. So let's say we set it for 0.3 seconds. If we say, hey, into the microphone, immediately we'll hear that. And then 0.3 seconds later, we start playing back the recording. So we'll get, hey, hey. And then if we take that output and optionally feed it back in, mixing it with the input, that whole thing is going to then repeat. We play it back to the input and you get this ongoing decaying echo. The gain will be less than one, so this signal is going to be a little quieter than the original. So you'll get hey hey, and then it will come back and go hey hey, a little quieter, and eventually it just dies out. So let's set this up in the Teensy Audio Design Tool GUI. First, we need a way to get sound into the Teensy. So in this case, to get started, I'm going to use this play memory thing. So if I bring that in and we look at the info, we can use this Wave 2 sketch program, take a little audio file, and it gets compiled into the program, and you can play that sound back from memory. I did a previous project where I made a Teensy drum sample player. I'll link to that below for more info on how I got this working. But we're going to take a TomTom -tom drum and play it from memory. And ultimately we need sound to come out somewhere, so I'm going to use a DAC output. And since we are going to do a delay, we'll bring the delay module in. So now we just wire it up, output of one to the input of the other, and so on. And if we click on a module, it will give us info over here. Within this delay module, we have up to eight outputs. We only need to use one if we want. But if we want things like multiple different delays, like if you go, hey, and you want it to say, hey, after a certain time, and then say, hey, again, after another period of time, for some reason, to get some interesting delays, we can set those up here. And anytime we have multiple paths that we want to go to one output here, we need a mixer. So we can drag a mixer in and those each have four channels. So the output of the mixer is our final audio out and that goes to the DAC. Going into the mixer, we want our original sound to always be playing and we're going to want some sort of delayed copy of our audio and maybe another different delayed copy of the audio. So with this, we play a sound and we hear it directly right away. Then we hear it some time later, and then we hear it some different time later, and that's it. It's like a one-shot trigger. And if this is the architecture we want, we would export, and then we get this header right here that we would copy into an Arduino sketch to get started. And this doesn't control any of the settings. We still have to write some code to say what these delay times are and what gains we want on the input of each mixer channel, things like that. And we have to define what's the audio sample in this memory player. But this just gets us started with saying what devices we have and how they are connected up with these patch cords. So once we're in the sketch, we would use functions like delay, what channel, and how long to control these. And for the mixer, we have a function called gain on a given channel and what level we want the gain to be. Here I have a sketch. It's a delay demo with no feedback, which means we just get the original sound, one delay and one delay, and that's it. And to make the drum sample available in the sketch, we include this header file. In order to trigger when to play this drum sample, I just have a, an input push button on digital pin 6, and I'm debouncing it. And this is the portion that comes from the GUI when we export, and it just sets up what items we're using and how they're wired up ins to outs. So drum sample is this memory player, 
DAC1 is the output DAC. Mixer 1 and Delay 1 are these blocks here. And we have a patch cord going, for example, from here to here. So this cord is from the drum sample, and 0 is just the first and only available output. And this goes to the mixer input 0. So that's right there. And so on. That's how these are all wired up. And the rest of the sketch is where we control those available parameters on any of these modules, like what is the gain on the input of the mixers, or what's the delay time on each of these outputs we want to use. So first, in the setup, of course, for a push button, it's an input with a pull-up and the push button connects to ground. This audio memory, 800 blocks, that's more than enough. I just chose something so I'm getting close to full memory capacity, just so I get more and more delay time available. Over on the Teensy Info pages, when we're trying to figure out how many audio memory blocks we need, it says here, basically, each block holds 128 audio samples, which is about 2.9 milliseconds of sound. And usually what you do is just guess what you need, but then you can use this audio memory usage max, and you can see how much memory it actually ended up using. And I've already done that. I think my maximum was 600 and something blocks, but I just put 800 here. And now just controlling the gain on each of these mixer inputs. They go 0 to 3, so number 3 I'm not even using, and I set the gain on 3 to 0. And generally, when we have more than one audio channel, we want the gain to be low enough that when we have all these things playing at once, we don't get audio clipping. So I just went with 0.5 for a gain on all the rest. And now for these two delays, the first one at 400 milliseconds, and the second one at 300 milliseconds, just so when I hit the drum, I'll get two really fast slapback sort of hits, and then that's all we get until we trigger the drum sample again. So then in the main loop, all I'm doing is constantly checking the button debounce to see have we had a button press. If so, play the drum sample, and it will do its echo thing automatically, and then just wait for another button press. For this Teensy setup, I'm using this PCB that I recently made, and all I'm really using is this header here to plug Teensy into, and then I'm making use of this analog to digital input, and when I use the Teensy audio library, when I drag ADC1 into a project as an input source, that's the pin it's using from that board. So my audio comes in from an MP3 player, goes to A2 on the Teensy, and I basically have this recommended circuit here on that board. Then I'm just using extra header pins for push button and potentiometers. I'll link to the project video regarding this board for more info on that. But it basically comes down to I'm using this recommended hardware and pinout setup for these items. In this setup, there's extra things like these potentiometers and some other stuff down here we're not using for this demo. But we have Teensy on this breakout board, and we have a push button here to trigger the drum sound sample. We're using DAC out here to go to this amplifier. So if I push this button, we should get the original drum sound, and then two different delays, and then it should stop because there's no feedback to keep the sound going until it dies out. So we got the original, and then we got two taps. Now to convert this into a delay with feedback, so whatever delay pattern we get, it will keep looping that and gradually dying out. I also want the option for an MP3 player, so I will take this ADC input and add that to the mixer so I can get sound in from there. Now I'll remove this audio connection, bring this delay a little bit out of the way. There's our two possible sources of audio being mixed with some delay. So now I want to take the output of the mixer, bring it to the input of the delay, and what happens now, it doesn't matter which audio source, so let's still say we are playing the drum sound. We do a hit of the button so we get an immediate real-time copy of the sound, and now it also goes into this delay, and then depending if we're using one or both of these delay channel outs, after this real-time drum sound, at some time later we're going to get another drum sound, or a couple of drum sounds, and that's going to go in real-time to the audio out, 
and at the same time it's going to go back into the delay and get delayed again and with these gains set less than one every time there's a delay through here it comes out a little quieter gets mixed back in comes out to the audio path comes back and gets delayed comes out a little quieter and so it just kind of dies out now this sketch got a little more convoluted so before we analyze this sketch let's just jump into a demo Just skimming through for now, we have a lot of similar stuff here in the setup, but I have two new analog inputs where I'm reading two potentiometers. One controls delay time and one controls delay feedback. I can now set in real time, let's just say it's this first channel, one's going to be fixed and I may not even have it turned on. The other, I can use the pot and change this delay time and the other pot controls the gain on the mixer input for that delay. So if I make it really quiet, it's going to die out really quickly, so we'll get a couple of repeats and then silence. So these are the two analog inputs I'm using, and the final result of those readings will be scaled with these variables here, and I gave it an initialized gain of almost nothing, and a very short delay time, and it will get changed with the pot. There's a reason I chose analog 12 and 13 for the pots. If we click on this ADC module and we look at the info, they say analog read must not be used because this function here is regularly accessing the ADC. And if I try to do it with analog read, it could crash and things like that. There's actually two physical ADC cores in here. And in this forum post I found, by default, the ADC input on Teensy is going to use ADC0. And that leaves ADC1, a totally separate ADC, free to use analog read without crashing. So A12 and A13 are available for things like potentiometers. And in the setup, this time I want to use the serial monitor for some debug output text. And we've seen all of this stuff here before. So I change the pot, I get a different delay time updating in real time. Then in the main loop, first thing I'm doing is reading in both pots and I'm printing it out on the debug monitor. And once I've read the pots and I've scaled the numbers, I set the delay time and I set the mixer gain in real time each time through the loop. And I read the push button to see if I want to play a drum sample and if so, play it, and that's pretty much the sketch. Any other audio coming in from the ADC will just get automatically channeled into the delay module and on out to the DAC. And there's a little routine here to round off by 100 for this delay time pot. Because with the numbers kind of jumping all over the place, I wanted them to be a little more stable, so I just kind of round it off in chunks of 100 using the fact that integers automatically drop the decimal. Let's say the ADC reading was 1029, but I just want this rounded down to 1000. So 1029 divided by 100 is 10.29, but as an integer that would actually just end up being 10. So then if I say 10 times 100, I just get 1000. So I've rounded my 1029 down to a thousand. So that's what's going on here. So here is where I'm getting this feedback level scaling by using floating math. I'm scaling the large range ADC input down to a level between 0 and 10, dividing it by 10.0, and that just gives me a final fractional number between 0 and 1. For the delay time, I take the big ADC range, scale it down between 0 and 2,000 milliseconds, and then I use that rounding function to just round it off by 100. Because this was jumping all over the place, I just want it to stay stable. So if those sketches are confusing, that's why this audio GUI tool is a lot easier to understand. So let's try this out with a drum sample played from memory and an MP3 player that we just suddenly stop and see how it echoes out. I have this power supply just under 1.2 volts for these potentiometers because 
I'm using analog read to read those in, and in this mode we can only have max 1.2 volts, so I set it just below that to be safe, and that's going on VCC and ground of these pots. I've got the analog audio channel set to zero because I'm not using an MP3 player, I'm just going to use the drum sample from memory, and I have one fixed delay at 300 milliseconds, so having no delay on this one input and 0.3 seconds on this other input, and a little bit of feedback into the mixer, we'll get a delay of 0.3 seconds that will gradually die out relatively quick. Now if I change the pot to actually give a delay time, 400 milliseconds here, now when I press the button I'll get two delays really close together, 0.3 and 0.4 seconds. Now if I increase this feedback level, those two delays will be going back through the mixer a little louder, so it will take longer for that decay until the sound goes away. So I will change the sketch now, take away that second delay so we only have the one, and I'm going to turn on the analog input channel, so there's some volume now, and if I put an mp3 player into there, I can get a delay. I'll upload this and we'll see what happens. Now if I trigger the drum sound, it'll just be the one delay based on whatever the pot here is, and it will last as long as whatever the feedback pot is. And if I start playing an mp3 and then stop the playback, we can hear the delay on that. That's the basics of digital delay, storing an audio clip and basically playing it back to simulate a natural echo. If you found this informative or entertaining, give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more content like this when it comes out, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.